it's very difficult to be a pioneer scientist. And I know that from personal experience. And up at uh, the Stanley Hotel, um, I was hearing an interview uh, of Professor John Searle uh, by Christine Ferguson for a documentary they're producing. And at the end of the interview, Professor Searle was in tears, the, the production crew was in tears, and I was in tears listening to what happened to him and his imprisonment and the destruction of his uh, research. And uh, anyway, he's got a fascinating story, and I'd like to give you a little background on Professor Searle. Professor John Searle is the only man in history to have built and flown an anti-gravity device called a Liberty Disk. The power source for this amazing disk can also be used to generate electricity with no apparent input from outside. Because of this obvious economical repercussions to the big money oil industries, this marvelous invention was squelched. Professor Searle has offered this wonderful boon to all mankind since 1946. The story of his hardships and persecution is a long one. Long after most men would have given in to the pressure of big business and corrupt government officials, he has come back one last time to offer this inspired work to the world. His electric generator and his levity disk are powered by a Searle effect generator, SEG. If we, the people of the world, choose to use this marvelous technology, we would eliminate pollution from the internal combustion engine and the various methods of home and industrial heating. Anything can be run electrically, can be driven by an SCG with virtually no pollution and no use of fuel as we know it. Professor Searle uses existing physics laws in a new application. He has written a series of books on his work and is offering them to the public. His technology is based on a coherent number system called the Law of the Squares. His books have the same name. Dr. Searle will talk about this morning the technology of Professor John Searle. So please welcome Professor John Searle. For those of you, of you who were with us last night, we're still recovering. <laughs> I would like to thank the INE for having us here and the opportunity to share this information with the world. And uh, we have had a great deal of context and met a great many uh, very interesting, wonderful people here. And we're very grateful for that. <clears throat> we're all getting to know Professor Cyril. I'm getting to know him more and more every day, even though I've corresponded and, and talked to him for over four years. And I'm learning things new every day in every time he talks. Every talk that he gives is different. There's no rehearsal. There is no set pattern, and it, you don't never, never know how it's going to come out. <laughs> so I'm confident it will come out very well, indeed, and I'm going to turn it over to Professor Cyril now. Anyone with rheumatism can see me after, and I'll try to cure it for you instant. <laughs> I thank you all for putting up with your suffering last night. That was the hard call. Today, I have to give you the soft call. We are going to go into the technical side. So, that won't be quite so funny. So we'll start with the begin, beginning, and we hope that this will interest you. Uh, we've got a slight technical problem. Ah, this photo is the very first press photo. We had the press medium came because I advertised in the paper that I wanted members to develop a new type of craft. Here we were demonstrating a ball race. The ball race to most technical people is a subject that must be well greased. For my work, grease prevents the operation. We get rid of it. Now mind what the scientists say, that it will seize up. It don't seize up. In fact, you could do some very amazing experiments, which I did to the media, and we recorded the evidence 
on the tracking equipment. Now from that, the development grew, and we'll show you the next shot. Here in Germany, it's the argon tank in which we are measuring out the powders by which the elements are is, in which we use to press the rollers and plates of the SEG. Here we are, this shows you the means in which you get into the tank because the air must not come in contact with helium. Here we are, the very first roller that was produced in Germany a couple of years ago. We are holding it because this was a great excitement. Hundreds of people have been trying to make this roller. They gave up because their thinking was wrong. That's all that was wrong. They got the roller out and it kept cracking. That is my safety net. No one is going to copy that roller unless they're working full heart with me. You can spend as much as you like and I would think there must be about 10 million pounds spent by so many people trying to make that one roller. This is the uh, magnetizing equipment. Here we are just making test models so we don't need a very big machine. Again, you see another view. If you notice, there is a number of coils involved. This again is slightly different to normal practice. Another view of the coils. Another view. So anyone wishing to make the, these rollers realize you've got to have a, have a bit of patience and I mean patience and don't give up. Now you may say why can't you make it? Well let's put it this way. If you make a house brick you've got to buy the ovens and all the necessary equipment to make that one brick. That costs you a fortune. That's the same here. To make one roller you may be looking at 12 million pounds. So you've got to make millions of them because after the first one they cost very little to make. That first one is the bug. <laughs> Here is the magnetic field around the first segments produced in Germany. By the way, these pictures are in the books. So those who, who want to study them more closely can do so. Now, here is the illustration of the SUG build-up. Can we show the plates uh, with the pointer, please? You notice that is what we call the plate in which the rollers run on. That's what we call the roller, and these have to be slightly shorter than a plate, so they have free movement. We show here the coil uh, which we build on the outside of the last ring, which supplies the final work. The only difference between this machine and the conventional machine is that this is the prime mover. The coils is standard practice. Notice we've shown four colours. That represents the, the different layers of elements which are compressed to form the plate. The same must apply to the rollers. The weight of, or the volume of the plate 